Thanks. Uh, so um, in line with the INCF shift towards uh, standards and best practices, um, I just thought I'd like to share some work we've been doing in Australia to create a, a national standard for neuroimaging informatics. Um, so this, this work came, um, was proposed in a project by the Australian National Imaging Facility, which is a, sort of a national body which, through what a lot of the funding for infrastructure, imaging infrastructure in um, Australia comes through. And so there's a number of different nodes. So most sort of imaging centres in Australia will get funding through National Imaging Facility. And so it's a good place where to sort of coordinate these kind of efforts. So, um, so the, in this project, we had four um, universities who were contributing um, and looking at uh, two sort of MRI systems. So one is a small animal, sorry, oh, yeah, small animal Brooker 9.4 um, MRI, and the other was a human uh, semen scara, just as two sort of starting points to begin this process. So kind of the aims of the project were to um, basically to give users the, enough information so they could determine whether the data that they were, um, data in these repositories is fit for their purpose. Um, and we also want to sort of future-proof this so that someone who wants to come back and use this data in 10 years' time can come back and go, well, is this data of sufficient quality for depending on what I want to do with it? And so to do that, we need to make sure that we're storing the appropriate metadata and um, we've also sort of started to standardize some quality control and assurance, which is particularly important for the sort of small animal side of the project. Um, and so yeah, on top of that, we, by working together to come up with best practice, hopefully we can improve the quality and re reliability of the data that is being generated from our facilities and also through the project promote the fair principles and maximize the utility of the data. So the, the project, it was a fairly short project for like the, the sort of scope that we're dealing with here. So we're not saying that we've got the, the final, you know, this is the way that everyone needs to do their, um, acquire their data and store their data and, you know, keep all the provenance or anything. But it's just sort of a starting point, a framework with which we can sort of gradually sort of build up best practices within, within the um, National Imaging Facility. So we have, some uh, documentation on how to uh, you know, certify the data as meeting these standards. Um, some, uh, some of the process, we've documented some of the processes for acquiring the data and ingestion, um, how we sort of store the data in these repositories. And then we've sort of come up with two uh, exemplar systems for both the human and the preclinical um, uh, you know, scanners that we're working with. So, uh, so on the, um, the certification of the data, so again, we're not trying to say that this data is um, of a particular quality. We just want to say that there's enough metadata, enough, you know, a link to quality control data so people can make up their own mind whether it's fit for their purpose. Um, so we, you know, make sure that, you know, there's unique identifiers sort of tying the, the data to the instruments involved. Um, cross-reference to quality control. Um, and then also, again, this is more sort of critical for the, sort of the small animal um, data, which is typically less standardized than your clinical systems. But uh, so make sure that there's the, always access to the raw data with all the acquisition protocols. And so you can be, you know, you can do whatever you, um, you need to do with the, the data. But then on the same, on the other hand, um, have conversions to open data format so it's as widely um, accessible as possible. Um, on the sort of acquisition uh, ingestion sort of procedure, uh, we were looking at um, sort of sort of saying that we should, we need to have an automated process for this, but then in, you know in some situations that's not possible. So we, as sort of a lowest common, common denominator, we say well at least the the process needs to be documented, uh, but automated where possible. Um, all the instruments that the data is collected from get registered at this um, central uh, Research Data Australia um, website, so you can you know exactly the the model of the um, the instrument where the data was collected. So uh, again, this is not so 
it's probably in, in, at the moment that the data is collected, it's not such a big issue. But if we're looking to store this data long term, then you know, in 15, 20 years time, someone may not know whether this instrument that Monash biomedical imaging was of one particular model or the other. So it, it's really trying to make sure this data is as useful long into the future as possible. Um, and yeah, again, uh, have a regular quality control um, schedule and do some sort of very basic quality assurance just to make sure the data is complete and it's reconstructable and it's not, um, there weren't any sort of um, errors in the ingestion process. Um, so then also look to formalize the way that the data is stored. Um, so we have a, this idea of a data repository service, not really a, not a particular repository because we want to be flexible, just say if new technology comes along, you want to switch your repository to something else. Um, but this service is guaranteed for 10 years. So um, this was part of the project and it kind of forced us to sort of go and get some from all the different universities, go and sort of say, look, we've got this part of this project. We want to make sure this data is, you know, preserved into the future. Um, it was sort of a good, good way to have that discussion with the university and get the funding guaranteed for a longer period. Um, wanted to make sure that we have institutional authentication so we know uh, we have sort of a link to a real world person for all the data that was collected. Um, and yeah, sort of identify whether the data in the repository is, doesn't meet all these, the metadata um, standards that we are setting. Um, and so once we'd sort of set up this uh, sort of documentation, again, it was just, we're just looking at the sort of bare bones uh, to start off with, but then hopefully over time this sort of matures into something more useful. Um, so we, we looked at the, our, each node looked at the setup that they had and um, did a self-assessment against the, um, this core trust seal um, certification, which is uh, it's set up by the World Data System and uh, the Data Seal of Approval um, organizations. And so it's basically just a checklist of about 10 or 12 points where you get to sort of see how your data repository matches up with these, um, you know, this certification, which is basically based on the FAIR principles. So it's a good process to go through and explicitly find out where the weaknesses in your um, uh, repository or system may be. And yeah, again, like look to sort of formalize commitments for guarantees around the data access. So, so yeah, we worked on two separate uh, exemplars for each modality, um, mainly because a lot of the data that comes from the clinical is in DICOM format, and so a sort of a specialized repository such as XNAT makes a lot of sense, whereas from the preclinical side of thing, you have, um, it's much less sort of structured. Um, so, so yeah, we basically we worked from XNAT just because it was a, seemed a good starting point and we've, you know, we worked, we developed some plugins to allow um, uh, open ID connect uh, access or authentication with XNAT um, so we can hook into this uh, national authentication um, federation. Uh, worked on ways to sort of upload some of the raw data and then yeah, developed a few pipe, simple pipelines for extracting quality control metrics and quality assurance. And yeah, likewise for the preclinical exemplar, we used this, um, used a different repository, this um, MyTARDIS, which was developed at Monash University, is a bit more general. Um, and again, you yeah, worked on some post ingest filters for you know, data validation and QC analysis. But um, so I suppose one of the, the key um, products of this project, which I think will have some real benefit to other nodes within the, um, national facility is um, we developed a Docker Compose scripts for both these exemplars. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with Docker Compose, it's, it's sort of a, a, a script which uh, instantiates a bunch of uh, Docker containers and links them all together. And so you, with like one, one command, you install Docker on your system, install Docker Compose, and with like 
one or two commands, you can pull up a, a data repository like XNAP, for example. Um, and so, yeah, we were able to pull out a very simple uh, sort of one-page set of instructions to you know, go to the relevant um, sort of uh, to the Australian Research Data Commons, which has uh, virtual machines and data storage. Um, so we had to apply for that storage and then install Docker on it and run it and get up and running with the data repository. So sort of like a yeah, starter kit that other nodes, which maybe don't have this kind of level of informatic support, can adopt very easily. Um, and yeah, the, the benef one of the benefits within our you know, context is that if, if everyone's sort of using the same um, configuration, then we can sort of help uh, assist each other a lot better and sort of sort of unify out the sort of national imaging facility, even though the nodes are quite separate. Um, yeah, so just in, in future, like as I said, there's just the basic framework at the moment, but um, we yeah, look to really sort of push the ability to publish data, um, yeah, work on some, uh, getting de-identification into the ingest procedures and um, make it very simple for uh, users to publish the data. And then you yeah, maybe, and also look at some sort of more in-depth quality control and assurance um, as well. So yeah, so it's a, this was a joint project between University of Western Australia, uh, Monash University, University of Queensland and University of New South Wales and this everyone who was involved. Thanks. Let's say you wanted to be interoperable with uh, the, uh, let's say, the, the bits uh, format and, and, and your open your infrastructure. How much work and what kind of work uh, do you think you should be done? Um, well, I suppose you could be, I mean, uh, you could be using the tools which, uh, well, hopefully there will be some easy ways to export from XNAT to bids, for example, and then I mean, it should be a, easy to create a, a pipeline wrapped around um, QDConf maybe or something like that, which could then export to bids and then users can download and, and um, yeah, run bids apps on it or something. So that's it shouldn't be too much work, but yeah, I think, yeah. It does, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's it's quite good. I mean, we worked with the Australian Access Federation to, on their end to um, have open ID support. So it basically means anyone with a institutional login in Australia can log into our um, into a, any of the repositories. Um, I mean, you can also then hook up to Google or something like that, which you know simplifies the at least from a maintenance point of view at least, and you know is a nice way for people to access these repositories. Yeah. 